good afternoon. Um, today, um, you're all welcome to this session. Um, basically, we'll be talking about um, how funders um, or donors deal with proposals, um, letters of interest, and some structured proposals. Um, let me say that um, my outline, it's going to basically talk about what are the interests of donors. Um, I will also talk about the grant cycle. I'll take a, talk about uh, preparation to take off. Um, in terms of what the donors are looking for, I mean, I think we've, we've spoken a lot about this and I did indicate it earlier on that donors are often, um, they have their priority areas. Um, just recently under the AF, AFR 100 initiative, um, I forwarded a proposal to um, the Rwandan team and basically what they were talking about, they, they were looking for initiative that said to promote restoration and tree planting. Um, I'm sure my Rwandan guys applied for it. I also use my existing project within my organization to apply for that. We have received feedback um, and um, the feedback was successful. As I speak, we are proceeding to apply for the second phase, um, which is developing the full proposal. And, and hopefully um, we should be able to get some grants. Um, we are applying for almost $500,000. And uh, I'm very positive uh, we would go through. Yes, um, enough of um, what has transpired. Um, these are my four points, donor searching points. One, you look out for the priority of the donor. What is the donor looking for? What is the priority of the donor in your country? And what is the funding ceiling and expectation in terms of management? A lot of us um, apply for grants without first taking cognizance of some of these provisions. One, let me emphasize this. One, you research on the priority of the donor. Don't just apply for grant simply because there's a call for proposal or call for concept. You research about the priority of the donor. Go to the donor's website and look at past um, projects that have been funded by the donors. So this guides you in terms of what um, your proposal, how your proposal should be structured and what you should be looking out for. And also what is the priority of your country um, in terms of the donor. Some donors have structured their proposal in such a way that certain actions are aimed at certain developing countries. If you talk about the FAO in the forest sector, they are doing more of impact monitoring. They are doing more of communication. So if you are developing a proposal within the forest sector for an FAO grant, then you need to skew it towards communication and impact monitoring. What is the funding ceiling like? You cannot apply for certain grants if you don't know the ceiling and you don't know much about the management. And that is why most grants will ask you what is the highest amount of um, expenses or, or expenditure in terms of project outlay that your organization has ever managed. I would want to reiterate that for foundation chapters like ours, um, let us be very careful um, in terms of our attempt to apply for bigger grants. Um, the management and acquisition of these grants are very, very tough. Trust me, when it comes to the World Bank, when it comes to the European Union, if you don't have the right structure, even with the smaller grants like the Global Environmental Facility, I just indicated about the AFR 100 initiative. It was a small grant. I, I am privileged to have been part of the processes. Um, I submitted a grant, hours have been approved we, we would be submitting the full proposal today, as I speak, um, today, one day. I, I am very hopeful that we would 
go through. I, I, I haven't spoken to my Rwanda folks to know um, whether they've received a response, but all that I seek to say is that these four searching donor points, please, let's take them seriously. What are the priorities of the donors? What are the priorities of the donor in your country? So they are broader donor priorities and they are priorities of the donor in your country. And what is the funding ceilings, especially for projects in your jurisdiction and expectation of management. And here, take this thing very critical. You cannot apply for funds if you don't have strong management. When I say management, it is not about having a professor on your management team, no. It is about having the experienced person, somebody that has ever managed a similar project, somebody that has ever managed a similar fund to that ceiling. And that is why it is imperative that as foundations chapters, you endeavor to bring a lot more people into your circles identify professionals that have demonstrated in terms of um, what they have been able to do in the past regarding management of funds. Even if it means co-authoring somebody as a chartered accountant, have the basic structure, the senior management, chief executive or, or team lead, you have the, a chartered accountant who can, who can help in terms of um, filing of documents and responding to account queries. You need to have a legal team. These are very important. No donor will throw money at you simply because you have applied for grants. Please, the grants market is very competitive and the value chain is increasing every single day. Please, let's take this thing seriously. Yes, I wanted to look at a broader intercourse between the Upper Guinea Forest um, and priorities of certain donors uh, in terms of the EU. And, and this one is largely targeting the West African South region. If you look at the Upper Guinean Forest, Liberia will need a lot of monitoring. So my Liberian team, because if you look at the map, you would realize that Liberia is still mostly Liberian, some sections of Celerion is still mostly green. That require us to do more monitoring in Liberia. Ivory Coast will require a lot of afforestation. Ghana will require a lot of planting and afforestation. And if you know the priorities of your country, today I know the priorities of Ghana. I know the priorities of Ivory Coast. Liberia, I know their priority because they are drifting towards community management of forests. But I was privileged to have, to have had a discussion with the EU delegation head of section. And I did indicate that if, as at the time I visited Liberia, if they had by then approved certain number of uh, uh, community forest management, and uh, there were some pending. And I did indicated to him that if they approve all the community forest management applications, trust me, in the next 10 years, the Liberian forest will be like Ghana. And I do not want to come and see the beautiful forest of Liberia being depleted like what we have in Ghana. So um, this is just, by the way, just to show some priorities within um, the West African region in terms of forest management. The grind cycle. Normally, when, when you submit a letter of interest um, or letter of intent, you can call it a concept note, you can call it whatever you, you choose to call it. Um, it must start from one stage to another before it blows on to where you would um, have signed a formal contract. Normally, um, when you submit, um, some donors would give you some time frame maximum within a month you should have a response and when you are being approved to move further you will now go into the development of the full proposal 
Some donors do have their own template for full proposals. Now, the full development of the full proposal does not constitute a contract with the donor. The donor is merely giving you an opportunity to develop your proposal further. And after developing the full proposal, and trust me, pay attention to certain key indicators. This is when you are able to express yourself very well about what you intend to do. Once you are able to do this, you meet the donor priority gaps, you meet the donor um, areas of concentration, you meet the budget ceilings. And trust me, Sheila will be talking about budget. Do not submit a grant proposal or do not submit a proposal that has human resource 60% of the total budget. Please desist from that. Maximum for larger grant should be 35%. 35%, the 65% or so should be dedicated for operations and then actual work. Donors understand the, the interplays of these things. Do not apply for funds in the name of going to implement the project. Ends up paying for your own time on the project. We don't do that. Except when um, you have indicated certain capacity building and you're going to use in-house. Even then you need to indicate how much you are going to charge for in, in using in-house um, expertise. Please, let's take note of some of these things. So basically when you talk about the brands, the grant cycle, you would, the first thing is you submit a letter of interest or letter of intent, concept note. Then when you are approved, you move to the state where you do all the full proposal. And this is when you include all the um, theory of change, the log frame and all those things. This also depends from donor to donor. The, the recent um, full proposal that I'll be submitting today, there's nothing like theories of change there and there's nothing of log frame there. It's a very simple template that you just need to go through and submit. Uh, but of course, your justification must be strong and your justification for your expenses must be very strong um, to give the donor an indication that you are not just interested in money to spend, but you are interested in achieving a common goal that the donor is the wants to achieve. And after you have submitted your full proposal, um, sometime maximum within three months, you should get um, a response to indicate that you've successfully won the, the grant. Then you now go to the contract signing. After the contract signing, of course, um, you have to um, get down to do much of the business. And most often than not, you'll be required to go back and conduct a needs assessment. Apart from those needs assessment that you did to fill your project, you have to conduct a formal needs assessment and then understand the project priority areas before you start rolling out the project. So basically this is the grant cycle. Um, now in preparation for implementation. Normally um, when, when you are preparing for implementation, first of all, you need to identify who your stakeholder is. So I would say that you do a stakeholder mapping. It could be a DAC study. Um, you could invite other stakeholders from the NGO, um, from your sector, let them meet. Um, you do a broader consultation. You present the project over, overview and you have a lot of people advise you on some of the implementation strategy to adopt. You cannot succeed if you want to um, implement projects solitary. It doesn't work that way. Even big organizations like my Tropping Balls Ghana that has had a lot of imprints in the forest sector, we would often bring people together to solicit for idea when we win a project before we roll out on the projects. Yeah, thank you very much. I wish all of you all the best and I'm hoping that we meet on Friday. We can clarify some few things. And of course, please take note of um, donor requirements in terms of the donor priorities, in terms of your county priorities. Also seek for some management structures in terms of what you can do. And then uh, I'm, I'm very positive that at the end of this whole training, uh, we may have one or two or even more persons um, winning grants. And I would want to be part of a winning proposal. I mean, I'm always available. If you have a very good proposal that you want us to gently develop it, why not? I am more than ready to support. Thank you very much. See you on Friday.